Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Betting Pros Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. You can find me on Twitter at DanHarris80. It is time to talk some more NCAA tournament, the Sweet 16. With me to do it is Matt Peralt. Find him on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. Matt, uh, we got eight games to go through, none of which I had in my bracket. I, I will talk about it from a betting perspective, but how did your how is your bracket looking that you filled out? You had Illinois, is that yeah. right? Did you have Illinois, Illinois going all the way? Yeah, I've lost three of my four. But I have Gonzaga going to the final game. Yep. So I'm still alive, I guess, with that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, not not exactly the final four I had predicted or the Sweet 16 I predicted either in terms of what I thought we would be sitting here. I thought this was going to be a very chalky tournament. Yeah. Nope. Not yep. a very chalky tournament. Maybe the Oregon pick, the Oregon in this Oregon in the Sweet 16 is probably the best pick I made throughout the entire. Yeah. Bracket. I legitimately have Gonzaga and Baylor. And that's it. Left. Now I have them meeting in the finals, but that that's all I have left. Um, it's funny because I got my son into it. You know, my son is seven. Nice. Anything that's competitive, he gets really into it. So this is kind of a shock to his system. Thankfully, we also filled out an, a women's bracket, and we are crushing oh, on that one. So he's really? very excited there. Yeah, oh, we're crushing. Absolutely, we're, we're crushing. But anyway, we're going to be talking about the eight games in the Sweet 16, but we have plenty of more for you. Uh, number one, go to bettingpros.com. Click on the March Madness tab. You will see a ton on the games in the Sweet 16 and going forward. Number two, youtube.com slash betting pros. Matt's going to be doing two live streams this weekend, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, both at 1 p.m. Eastern, Matt. Is that right? 10 a.m. your time? I believe that's what we said. If that's what we I think said, so. then yes. Okay. Okay. If, if, probably. If, that, if that's what we said. Normally we're doing it at eight o'clock, so I appreciate the opportunity to sleep in. So I uh, think I, it's just that we're basically so, doing it an hour before tip off. So great. that's what you get. But Let's either way, it. go to youtube.com slash betting pros. It is on there. We have an event created. So Matt, when you want to know when you're going to be on, you can go ahead and check that great. out as well. <laughs> but that's what that is. Uh, and finally, the Daily Juice podcast. So we're going to be talking obviously about all eight games, but I know exactly how Matt feels about two of them already because mm. he has already bet them and he, you know, he, you were right on on one of them. them. I bet five of them already. Well, not on the juice, though. Yeah, right? well, I just haven't. I'm just having like I, I, I'm doing breadcrumbs. I'm with you. I'm with you. Just like I can't give them all out at once. You know, you got to keep, keep the masses coming back for more. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> Every day, by the way, the Daily Juice podcast. We were joking about it. Matt has bet because that's what the podcast is. Matt places bets every day since when did it start? Matt was it July seventh? July seventh. It's two hundred sixty-five okay, every... straight days at the time of taping. And how many of those <laughs> days did you say to your wife, you know, out of two, however many, 265, whatever it is, how yep. many days did you actually say to your wife, man, I, I don't, I don't think I want to bet today. How many of out of those? Two days? of them. There's been two, two. days. Yeah. There's been two of the 265 where I literally was, it was like 830 at night and I hadn't either one time I was really hot and I wanted to just enjoy it. <laughs> and one time I was really cold and I just didn't want to fire again. I was yeah. just like, man. <laughs> I don't want to do this today. Like, there's only been two times where I've actually had to, like, you know, it's kind of like eating your vegetables. But uh, yeah. the, other, the other 263 have been a ball. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And right now you are on a hot streak. You're yes. 12 and 3 as the time that we tape this. So, again, go out, check it out, Daily Juice Podcast, anywhere you, you know, listen to podcasts or on bettingpros.com. Yeah, and, and by the way, to, to, to the guy who listened to the last time we did this, who said he was stupider from listening to the two of us talk. So... <laughs> Like, like, like I, I one, I appreciate you listening, but, but two, you do realize that everyone's bracket is destroyed, right? I mean, yeah. I, I don't think I'm alone by saying that I did not have many teams here in the Sweet 16 making it here. I don't think I'm alone in that. So, yeah, go ahead and crap on us if you want for not having these, you know, all these 16 teams right, but... Betting over brackets, buddy. Betting over yeah. brackets. Don't worry about it. Let's get into it. Let's start with Loyola Chicago. Now laying six and a half to Oregon State. The total is 125 and a half. So break this game down, Matt. How do you see it happening? Man, this is a hard game. I can really make a strong case for either side. And I'm gonna I'll tell you what I did with this game along with the Baylor game here in a second, how I'm gonna be playing it. But I think the defensive effort for Loyola Chicago is so impressive. And don't call them a Cinderella because they're not. You've got a big who is one of the best, just he doesn't look like a great player, but he is, and they run everything through him, and Crutwig is a difficult matchup yeah. for so many teams, and look, Porter Moser is a guy I've known for a really long time, he's a phenomenal coach, he's a better person, he's a great, great guy, and I couldn't be happier for somebody like that to have all this success, he's a Chicago guy through and through, Cub fan, loves Chicago, doesn't want to go anywhere, wants to stick around, and I think he's going to be in his second Final Four, I, I think they win this game. I just don't know about the margin. 
It yeah. seems heavy. I mean, seven points seems six and a half, seven points seems heavy to me. So I think Loyola wins. Uh, but if I had to bet it, I'd take the points. You don't like the, the I mean, it's minus 335 on the money line. That's way too steep for you, right? For Loyola Chicago? It, you, can par, you can parlay it and get it down. Is that That's, what you would do? Is that how you would play I, it? It's what I've done. I'll tell you. Okay. What, I'll tell you what I've done here in a second. Once we get to the second game, but that that is that's how I'm I'm playing this on the money line as a part of a two team parlay. Just yeah. because I I think they win, but I don't love the total is so low. Yeah. That it could be like a fifty five fifty win for Loyola. Like the under right. one twenty five. The under still has value with the way with how slow. I mean, this game could have 65 possessions. Like, it's just going to be an absolute walk the ball up the court every single trip. And neither team really wants to score. So when you see a total that low at 125, and then one team is favored by seven or six and a half, it yeah. just doesn't really correlate there. I mean, it, 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 would, it would pan out to be a closer game, even though Loyola might dominate it. Right. And interesting. I mean, you mentioned seven. <laughs> I, I checked. Right before, you know, a half hour before we went taping, the consensus line, which is what I use when I give the lines, the betting pros consensus line. We take lines from sports books all across and we give you the consensus. It now has moved to seven. There are still okay. some six and a half out there, bet MGM notably, but it is at seven right now. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I don't like it at all. Um, but if I if I had to, I'm just saying this is stay away from me. Forget it. I'm not even going to yeah. I'm not even going to pretend that I like it because it's just a game. And again, Lola Chicago, I mean, it. They weren't an eight, right? That's the thing. No, like they, they weren't an eight. No, they, they were put there to get the game uh, against, uh, you know, Illinois. Uh, Illinois. So it really, yep. just no, not, I'm staying away. Baylor laying now seven and a half to Villanova, and the total is 141 and a half. So go ahead and talk about this game because I've heard you talk about it before. Yeah, so this is my first bet. It's Baylor minus six and a half. Yep. I've got I've got a running gag with Dave Sherapen on my radio show and he he calls it we call it it's the Bostonian versus the book. So it's BB. And when he loves a play, he calls it a B square bag play. And he thinks this is like an empty the bankroll type play on Baylor. And okay. this is gonna be I'm nervous because of the number of people that I'm talking to that are feel, are seeing seeing the game exactly how I'm seeing the game. And that is basically that the backcourt for Baylor is so talented. And without Colin Gillespie there to control tempo That's for Villanova, the they're going to have a yep. really tough time here. This is where the injury really catches up to yep. them. They can get past Winthrop. They can get past North Texas just based upon talent and yep. just their, their front court being as good as it is. But when you go up against Baylor, you need everyone. Yep. And not having Gillespie here is going to be a big, big problem. I, I think Baylor is going to run them out of the gym. Uh, this is probably a double-digit win for Baylor. They can most likely name their score. So I bet it at six and a half. Number has moved now into seven and a half. But the way you can play Loyola and Baylor together, you can get about minus 120 odds on this. Moneyline parlay. Okay. Baylor and Loyola Chicago. Two-leg Moneyline parlay. I've done it. You'll get minus 120 on this, depending on the book, 123, 125, somewhere in that range. And you get both games, and you can have action on both games. And I think both teams win. And you're not going to sweat the last second free throw to hopefully you you know you cover your six seven and a half point line. So right. I, I did lay the six and a half, but you also can do a two leg money line parlay on both Loyola and Baylor. Yeah, they're both sitting at basically the same thing. Loyola Chicago at minus three thirty five on the money line, Baylor at minus three forty five. So look, you called this on the Daily Juice because you mentioned this a couple of days ago. You said I'm betting it now at six and a half because it's going to move. Mm. And you've been right. Do you think it continues to move here in favor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think just well, what's really interesting about the Daily Juice or any of these daily podcasts that have now popped up afterwards is that these people are paying attention and not to say that we're talking to the insiders all the time, but a lot of times in this type of game, you know, if everyone's on one side and it feels like it's going to be the right side, the public's just going to trail. So right. books are going to move the number just because they need to entice dog money. So if they keep on getting hammered over and over again, they're going to keep on going up and up until they hit a number that the, that the pros will come back on with Villanova. So there's a number out there that pros will take Villanova. We just haven't really hit it yet. So eight, eight and a half, it wouldn't shock me if that's the closing number. All right, so let's say that you have not placed a bet on this yet and that mm -hmm. you want to bet it because you see this as Baylor winning and winning handily. What do you think your limit would be as to what that number would get to where you would be like, <sighs> okay, I'm... This is too high for me. Uh, I'm not getting in on it. It's getting close. I mean, okay. you know, eight would be my limit. I wouldn't go any higher than eight on this. I, I think they probably win by, by double digits, but basketball is, you know, yeah. it's a game of a bucket scored by two and three points. So yeah. it's not, it's, it's different when you're talking about six to eight to 10 to 12. I mean, it's tough. 
So, like, you're talking about if I bet six and a half and you bet eight, it's one bucket we're talking about that's separating right. us from hitting or not. So it does get a little dicey in terms of of laying bigger numbers. So I would be careful. Eight would probably be my max. All right. Let's go to the next game. Arkansas laying 11 and a half to Oral Roberts. The total is 159. So what do you think here? I have no interest in playing this game. This is the one game all weekend that I'm not going to touch because, look, the two teams played early in the year. Oral mm-hmm. Roberts lost by nine. In the game, Oral Roberts was up by double digits. Arkansas came back, won the game by nine. But there won't be any mystique to Arkansas for Oral Roberts. They've seen these guys before. Oral Roberts also just took down Ohio State and Florida. They did so by hitting their threes and hitting free throws. This is the number one free throw shooting team in the country in Oral Roberts and a top 23 point shooting team in the country. The problem is that Arkansas can really defend and they can get out and they can be physical and they're just a deeper basketball team than Florida. The Ohio State game is the one that kind of gives me pause and I'm like, man, that number's 11 and a half. It feels super heavy. Yeah. But I know a lot of people that think that Arkansas is a much different team now than they were when they faced Oral Roberts earlier in the year and they expect the Razorbacks just to boat race Oral Roberts. I don't know. I'm staying away from it for that matter because I think if I had to play it, I'd take the points. Okay, and what about the total? I mean, it's 159. <laughs> Look, the, the, it, no one's going to stop anybody. It's going to go up right. and down. I mean, if I was going to, I don't like that. It's really high. I think it's the highest one on the board right now. Yep. Creighton and, and Gonzaga is close to that, if not. You know, yeah, point one point less. less is Creighton and Gonzaga. Yeah, so I mean, it's the highest total of, of, of the weekend. Yep. So it's about the three-point shot. It's about moving up and down really fast. I would bet the over. I wouldn't bet the under in this game. No way. But I, I, I would play the over, but I'm not going to just because we've seen funny things happen in tournament games where no one can hit a shot and all of a sudden it's, you know, the under comes in. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Again, I know how you feel about this one. This is Houston Ling. Now six and a half is the consensus line to Syracuse. The total is at 140. So are we just at the point right now where like you get to the tournament and the two, three zone just can't be solved and that's all there is to it or what? How do you see this one? <laughs> Look, to me, it's the injury to Jarrell for Houston. I mean, yeah. it, it's just such a big injury for them. And when he was out of the game against Rutgers, they were a mess. He came back in, he gutted it out. Uh, here's, here's the debate. And this is why the lines go into Houston because against the two, three zone, the one thing you cannot do is rebound. And the one thing that Houston does, maybe better than anybody else in college basketball, is rebound. So what they're, what people are saying is that Houston's going to get a lot of easy buckets off of misses. They'll rebound, offensive rebound, and they'll have a lot of putbacks. And they also are fading that Buddy Beheim's not going to keep going the way that he is. Right. I'm banking on that he is. I'm banking on that shooters shoot. He's in the same city. He's not traveling. And I don't see why he would cool off from the ACC tournament to the first two games of the NCAA tournament. Why is he not going to hit every shot he's taking right now? I just, I don't get that. So I think Houston probably wins, but I think six points, now six and a half. I'm yeah. taking the dog in that. I mean, you, you, you'll get a better number than what I bet. I bet Syracuse plus six already. So right. I like Cuse. It's actually at seven now at BetMGM. Oh my. So Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you want that. So are you going to keep hitting it, Matt? I mean, does any of it give you pause? The fact yeah. that the numbers No, moving? of course it gives me pause. Yeah. I mean, when, 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 line move, when line goes against you, of course it gives me pause. But I mean, look, I've had these things in college basketball this year. The whole idea of closing line value is kind of out the window because yeah. I've been, I can't tell you how many bets I've lost this year where I've had four points of closing line value. And I've been like, oh, this is great. I bet two and now the line is six and this is awesome. Yeah. And then and then the team loses outright. Like it's just, so I I've had a lot of, you know, not great success with this. And in the tournament, I I know a lot of people think Syracuse wins this game outright. So, you know, I, I I may, the, the higher the line goes, the more plus money I'm getting on the money line and the more attractive that bet's going to be for me to jump on Syracuse money line. Yeah. So right now the money line on Syracuse is plus two twenty. So, I mean, it's, it's not, you know, not crazy, but it's worth the sprinkle. Yeah, it's worth yeah. the sprinkle. <laughs> worth the sprinkle. And again, if the line keeps moving, that number is just going to continue to grow. Yeah. All right, let's go to your boys. Let's go to Creighton Blue Jays. Gonzaga <laughs> is now laying 13 to Creighton. And the total, again, we mentioned it, not the highest on the board. Second highest total is 158. So, Matt, Creighton's your team. What do you think? All right, so, so am I going to give out all the daily juice plays? Because I can do it if you want me to. I mean, you can do whatever you want, Matt. I mean, it's too, I, I'm sure we have some crossover listeners and stuff like that, but you know, it's its own separate podcast. So, yeah. You know, so, you, I'll, I'll, all right. So, what, what I'll do is tonight, I'll give out, because I gave away my plays on Saturday, on Thursday. So, for the Daily Juice podcast coming up on Friday, I'll give my plays for Sunday. Okay. So, I, I, I have two bets on this game. So, first, Creighton and 
Gonzaga first half over 74 and a half is what I bet. Okay. These, these two teams have the potential to come out, and the Blue Jays know that they have to score. They are not yeah. going to stop Gonzaga. Right. There's matchup problems all over the place. I don't know how they stop Timmy. I like Christian Bishop a lot. He's given up size and weight, and just he's athletic and fun, but he's not a post player. He's a kid who grew from a point guard body into a post player, and the Jays love him, but Timmy's a legitimate NBA post player, and you're going to have a problem with Timmy from Gonzaga. I love Marcus Zagorowski. He's a really fun point guard, but Jalen Suggs is going to destroy him. So here's my. So I think the first half over 74 and a half. Okay. 13 and a half is the number I played, and I took the Blue Jays. Okay. Let me tell you why. If you look at historically speaking, this is one of the biggest spreads we have ever seen in the Sweet 16. Just funky things happen when you're playing on this level. The referees get involved. Like You don't normally see games decided by 15 to 20 points. The Jays have talent, and Mitch Baylock, Marcus Zagorowski, and the three-point shot better go for the Creighton Blue Jays. I think they lose by 10. I think 13 and a half is too high. Gonzaga wins, but I'll take the points with the Creighton Blue Jays at 13 and a half, and I think it's going to be sweaty. I think we're talking about free throws at the end and layups at the buzzer, and like it's going to be right there, just like the last game against Oklahoma for Gonzaga was. Had a late tee, some controversial endings that got to 16. They covered that 15 and a half point line. I expect a very similar, like one or two plays will dictate the total here in this game, but I'll take the 13 and a half. All right, and so I know you don't like the under because you don't like any unders at this point, but what about over on the 158? Well, I mean, I'm playing the over in the first half, so the over in the first half hits you beyond pace to go for the over for the game. So I don't hate to play the over in the game. It's just a matter of what does Gonzaga pull off the gas if they're up big? Right. Like, like they know they've got to go ahead and play a bunch of games here. Their goal is to win the championship. They don't care about the final score. So that would be my only concern about Gonzaga maybe – taking their foot off the gas and it turns into like a 75 65 victory and you don't get to the, you don't get over. So I think the first half over at 74 and a half is a more, is a safer play. Okay. Michigan laying two and a half to Florida state with a total at one forty three and a half. I will be honest. I did not think Michigan was going to make it here without livers. I I really didn't. Um, So I had that totally pegged wrong. So what do you think you're favored by two and a half with the one forty three and a half total? I'm going to get kicked in the teeth again for this, but I'm taking Florida state. And I just like you said, I, I had LSU beating Michigan. Yep. I think LSU would have beaten Michigan if it wasn't for the fact that LSU was tired. They ran I, that was, by the way, it was, I was explaining it to my son because I told you he's very invested in the bracket. And we were talking <laughs> about LSU and like he went to bed and LSU was winning. And then yeah. it was like and then it was just totally out of gas. Like yeah. that was just it. Yeah. They just couldn't hit their shots. I mean, their guards looked exhausted and credit Michigan. I mean, they tired yeah. them out in that yep. game. And they used their depth, and they used their conditioning, and they made LSU tired. And that's a credit to Michigan. But I think against Florida State, they've got length on length on length. And I got a crazy stat today before I bet the game that I believe it's 10 games in a row where Florida State has played a ranked opponent, and they've covered. So they they just play ranked teams really, really well. And Michigan's a one seed. So... Maybe Michigan wins on a last second shot. Maybe it's a two point victory, but I took the two and a half. I'll take Florida State plus two and a half. Any thoughts on the total 143 and a half or stay away? I really don't because Florida State can play either way. So yep. I, I don't know what type of, I don't know the strategy. I don't think Florida State wants to run with Michigan. It would be surprising if they want to get into a real, real up tempo game with them, but they might. So that's why I don't have a good read on the total in that game, but the three point shot definitely puts that number in jeopardy. All right, let's go to Alabama laying six and a half to UCLA with the total at 145 and a half. What do you think? Yeah, so I won't. This is one of the games where I'm going to wait maybe until the live stream to make this bet. I don't know yet. Right now, Bama's one of my teams. So I've been riding Alabama, betting Alabama, making a good amount of money on Bama all year. And I love their senior leadership. I like Nate Oates a lot. I think Petty's a really, really underrated leader and a really good player. They're getting Primo back for this game, which is huge for the three-point shooting. So that leads me to go Alabama, laying the six and a half. But I doubted UCLA against Michigan State, and they won the game outright. And I doubted them in their last game, and I was kind of like, come on, there's just no way UCLA is making the Sweet 16. I mean, this is, but here we go again with a team playing in the opening round when the first four making a run. 
Yeah. And Mick Cronin's a really good coach, and they're hitting everything. I mean, UCLA can't miss. <laughs> like, they're just on fire. So, I don't know yet. I, right now, at the time of tape, I'm on Alabama minus six and a half, but I don't know. Okay. And the total at all, 145 and a half, or stay away? No, I have zero read because UCLA, I think, will want to. I would play the under. If I had to bet, it would be under, but oh. that three point shot would be. I mean, UCLA is going to take the air out of the ball. They're yep. not. They have no interest in running with Bama. None. So they're going to play really slow. I just don't know. I just don't know. I if right now I would say the under, but I don't like the total in that game. All right, final game: USC laying two to Oregon with the total of one thirty-eight and a half. What do you think? All right, right back to the bias of, of me. Okay, <laughs> Dane Altman is an incredible coach, and I like Oregon a lot. I'm taking the two points, and I'm taking Oregon, and I know a ton of people who are against me. These two teams played in their first meeting in, in the regular season, and UCLA boat raced Oregon. Like, it wasn't even, it was 15-2 to two was the opening number when, they, when, when it started. The length of USC, Mobley is an NBA player, lottery pick, I mean, top three pick in the draft. I just think that Oregon has, I just like the way they're playing. I mean, it's why I like them against Iowa. They're long, they're athletic. Their guards play really well. The three-point shot's a monster weapon. They can do their three-quarter court diamond press that Coach Coach Altman's been running since I started watching him back in 2004. Uh, it's the same green press. You'll see him put his two fists up and shake his fists and then put a diamond together, and that's the presses that they're going to run. He's been doing it for years. So it's the same thing, and it's worked. <laughs> Oregon's gone to a Final Four. I, I'll go with Oregon plus the two. Okay. Any uh, feelings on the total? 138.5. Yeah, that one, I think the over is a good play there. I mean, yeah. Oregon, the, the over for Oregon, yes, yeah, eight straight games for, the, for, for Oregon. That's why I was on the over personally for the Iowa game at 149. Mm-hmm. And the live, the, the live total for that game got as high as 188 and a half, <laughs> which is, if, if you know co- total for college basketball, <laughs> yeah, that's a low NBA nuts. game. Yeah. I mean, I've seen NBA games approaching yeah. like 190. So yeah. that's sick for 188 yeah. and a half. It finally, I mean, it didn't get there, but it's still, that was the live line for how much scoring was going on between Iowa and Oregon. So Oregon games have been going over very consistently, eight straight, yeah. I'd bet the over. Yeah, they can all score. You know, that, that's yeah. basically what it is. All right, let me recap. Let me make, let me see if I can, you know, basically recap what I think some of your favorite plays are. So you yeah. like the money line parlay with Loyola, Chicago, and Baylor, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you said, you, what What do you get that at, about minus 120? Yeah, I got it at 120, but you can chop around. It just depends on the numbers that you're going to wind sure. up getting. And, and I got it when it was when I got it when it was six and a half, not seven right. and a half. Yeah. So that's going to impact the odds a little bit. But um, so maybe the odds, because the, the number has got the line's gone up and the money line total has gone down a little bit. The odds might be a little bit worse, but yeah. that's a way of having action in both those games if you want to get away from the point spread. OK, and you do like Baylor. Obviously, you yeah. got it at six and a half. It has moved. You still like it at seven and a half right now. You basically said yeah, eight is kind of where yeah. you tap out. I like it now, but eight's the max. I think you can right. still play it at seven and a half. You also like Syracuse that are now getting six and a half. So you took it at six, as yeah. we talked about on the Daily Do. So you like it at anything higher than six, right? Yeah, I thought it would go the other way. I was wrong. I, I thought yep. the number would come down, not up. It's gone up. So there's Houston money coming in. It maybe because Jerome's playing, people think, OK, uh, right. I mean, Calvin's, Calvin, Simpson, Calvin Sampson said it's going to be 75% and he hasn't practiced in three days. I don't know if that's a good thing and why you want to bet on Houston, but he's going to play. So I guess right. people think he's playing. So that's good news for the Cougars. All right. And you like Creighton getting 13 from Gonzaga, right? 13 and a half. Yes. 13 and a half from Gonzaga. Yep. Okay. And you like Florida State getting two and a half from Michigan, correct? Correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. And finally, Oregon getting the two from USC. Is that right? Yep. It's been a dog tournament. And yeah. so... I, I'm just going to kind of roll here. I'm laying a couple a couple favorites, but I, I don't like laying big chalk in tournament games. And I think that the dogs, I think the dogs are going to have a day again or a weekend again. All right, well, final question for you, Matt, because yep. you are a Creighton guy. What has to happen for Creighton to take down Gonzaga? They're plus six fifty on the money line. Um, the hotel lock, the <laughs> hotel rooms have to lock, and Gonzaga's <laughs> players can't get out. Okay, how, how you're a realist. That? That's all I wanted. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Wanted to give you some cred. All right, I would lo- look it. I would love it. I will be cheering. I will have my CU gear. I, I got one of my favorite. Shout out to Lawler's, which is in Omaha, Nebraska. It used to be one of my favorite places to go and shop, and I live there. They're sending me Creighton gear for the game. I'm going to have a Creighton Sweet 16 shirt that's going to arrive on, on tomorrow on Friday just in time. They're FedExing it overnight to me so I can wear it during the game. I am a huge Jay supporter. I love Coach McDermott. I like this team a lot. They don't have a killer, which scares me all year long. I'm saying, who's the guy taking the shot to knock out a number one seed? Here's the game. And maybe it is Marcus Zagorowski. 
I need Mitch Baylock to hit five threes. Okay, <laughs> he needs five threes. Zagorowski's got to score twenty, and Timmy's got to be in foul trouble. If those <laughs> things happen, maybe there's a See, chance. Now you're talking yourself into the. Even oh, I'm going. I'm going to 100 fanboy talk myself into this, and there's no debating. And then Gonzaga probably wins by 40. Yeah, I mean, this right. is Gonzaga. I mean, they're just so darn good. It's just that I liked what the Jays looked like against Ohio. That looked yeah. like the good version of Creighton. So all right, all right, fair enough. Um, all right. Anyway, so it, look, Matt, what Matt does, and again, if you listen to Daily Juice podcast, you know this about Matt. <laughs> he takes information from everybody and he continues to process it. And he's going to give you his final thoughts on the games on youtube.com slash betting pros on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So you get more of that. Again, you can go to bettingpros.com. We got breakdowns of all the games. And again, subscribe to the Daily Juice podcast. You can get that anywhere that you listen to podcasts or on bettingpros.com slash daily juice or bettingpros.com slash podcast. As always, we will be back next week with another episode. And until then, enjoy your games this weekend and your sweet 16.